Boaz was a wealthy man from Bethlehem who was mentioned in Christ's genealogy. He is the son of Salma, great-grandfather of King David. Boaz was descended from Nashon, the son of Amminadab. He was also a prince of the tribe of Judah in the generation of the wilderness. He lived in Bethlehem in the time of the judges and is described as a man of substance, that is, a wealthy landowner employing many young men and women on his estate. He is one of the central characters in the Bible book of Ruth, a sometimes neglected scripture brimming with life lessons and prophetic impact. Everything we read about Boaz in the Bible is positive. He demonstrates that he is a kind, charitable, and honorable man. The book of Ruth begins with a sad story about a Judean family. Elimelech, his wife Naomi and their two sons Malon and Kilian, flee to the pagan territory of Moab because of a famine in their hometown of Bethlehem. Soon after, Elimelech died, leaving Naomi with her two sons, both of whom had married Moabite women. Unfortunately, after ten years, Elimelech's sons died as well. Naomi later learned that the Lord had come to his people's aid by providing food for them. Ruth chapter 1 verse 6 Then she set out with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in Moab how the Lord had taken care of his people of Judah in giving them food. She decides to return to Judah, and one of her daughters-in-law, Ruth, joins her. Remarkably, Naomi and Ruth appear in Bethlehem at the start of the barley harvest. Ruth chapter 1 verses 6 to 22 When Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you because the Lord's hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem, when they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. 
So Naomi returned from Moab accompanied by Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Ruth worked in the fields as a gleaner, picking up leftover grain after the harvesters had passed. She was working in a field owned by Boaz, a member of the Elimelech clan. Ruth chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone whose eyes I find favor. Naomi said to her, Go ahead, my daughter. So she went out, entered a field, and began to glean behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the clan of Elimelech. Boaz, who had already heard about Ruth's concern for Naomi, approaches her and guarantees that she will be taken care of in his field. Boaz then discreetly instructs his harvesters to leave some grain stalks behind so that Ruth will have more to glean. When Naomi discovers Ruth has been working in Boaz's field that evening, she recognizes him as a close relative and one of their guardian redeemers. A guardian redeemer, also known as a kinsman redeemer, is a relative who has the privilege or responsibility of acting on behalf of a needy relative. In times of trouble, an Israelite can turn to a guardian redeemer. Leviticus chapter 25 verses 25 to 55 contains the laws surrounding the guardian redeemer. Ruth approached Boaz and told him she needed a guardian redeemer. Boaz told Ruth that he would be delighted to offer her redemption, which included marriage to her. However, there was one relative who was more likely to be the guardian redeemer. Boaz met with the other relative the next day and explained the situation. The man refused to marry Ruth, so Boaz made a promise in front of the city's leaders to take Ruth as his wife. Obed was born after Boaz and Ruth married. Boaz takes on the role of guardian redeemer, emulating Jesus Christ. The term guardian redeemer finds ultimate fulfillment in the coming of the Messiah. Jesus is our near guardian who came to redeem us and bring us back into God's family. Boaz illustrates his devotion to Ruth by lifting her out of deprivation providing for her needs, and ensuring that Ruth bears children to carry on the family name. Boaz represents our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Guardian. We are strangers, sinners, poor, abandoned, and struggling to survive. The Lord demonstrated kindness, gentleness, and generosity to us. He delivered us from spiritual poverty provided for our eternal needs, and provided us with a permanent home. Boaz means, in him is strength. And it is interesting that Boaz is the name of one of the two bronze pillars in the temple Solomon built for God. 1 Kings chapter 7 verse 21 Hiram set up the pillars at the porch of the temple. He set up the right pillar and named it Jachin. May he establish and he set up the left pillar and named it Boaz. In it is strength.